In this video, I'm going to show you the bottom half of items in Reaper. As you probably know, in Reaper, these are known as items. These are audio, and this one is MIDI. And there's a top half and a bottom half we could choose. But by default, they don't do different things. If we do things on the top half or the bottom half, it's going to behave the same. But we can change that. For example, if we click the top half, it selects the item and moves the edit or play cursor. And if we select the bottom half, it does the same thing on any of the items. The top half and the bottom half behave the same. Or if we drag it, it moves left and right. The top half or the bottom half. If we hold down Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, and drag it, it moves the contents without the item. But again, the same on the bottom. Or if we double click the top half, it opens up the media item properties. Double click the bottom half, it does the same. Or if we double click the top half of MIDI, it opens up the MIDI editor. If we do the bottom half, it does the same thing. And also for snapping our items to the grid. So if we turn on snapping in our grid and move our items, Left and right, they snap to the grid. If we do it on the top half or the bottom half. But if we hold down the shift key, it ignores that snapping so we can move it freely. But again, on the top half and the bottom half. But again, we could change all that so the top half and the bottom half behave differently. So let's open up our preferences, Control P on the PC. Command comma on the Mac. That opens up our preferences. We could scroll down to editing behavior and our mouse modifiers. And we can see in our context, media item and left click. By default, it's going to select the item and move the edit cursor. Of course, we could change it here if we want, or we'll change the modifier behaviors if we want. But we could also go to the media item bottom half and change it here as it defaults to pass through all the behaviors from the top half. But we could change it, to maybe select the items, but just select the items without moving the edit cursor. And now selecting the top, selects the item and moves the edit cursor. But selecting the bottom just selects the item. It doesn't move the edit cursor, which is useful if we want to keep the edit cursor or the play cursor in place, but just select our items. Just do it on the bottom half, but if we want the other behavior, do it on the top half. But we could also change the bottom half to do all these other things, like add stretch markers, click the top half, select the item, moves the edit cursor, select the bottom half, it adds a stretch marker. So we could add a bunch and stretch our items like this. A little bit easier just by selecting the bottom half. Or we could add take markers, and add take markers on the bottom half like this, give them names, and create take markers that easily. Or we could reverse the behavior. So the bottom half behaves like the top half, selecting the item and moving the edit cursor, but change the top half to just select the item. So we're reversing the behavior. So now if we select the bottom half, selects the item and moves the edit cursor or play cursor. But if we do it on the top half, now it just selects the item. So if we don't want to move the edit cursor or play cursor, we just want to select our items, just do it on the top half. If we do, select it on the bottom half. So we can reverse their functions. And this is also going to work with the left drag context. Again, it passes through the behaviors from the top half, but we could change it right over here. We can move the item contents along with these parameters. We'll just keep it simple. Moving the contents without the item, just on the bottom half. So the top half moves the item if we left drag but the bottom half just moves 
the contents. It doesn't move the actual item. Or we could just move the edges, but not the contents. So now the top half moves everything, but the bottom half just moves the edges. The left and right side, as you can see right here, but it doesn't affect the contents inside. We could also adjust the volume or the pan or marquee select the items or create razor edits or marquee zoom, which is one of my favorite features as it doesn't exist on the top half by default. So if we choose this, we could drag the top half, moves the item, but if we go to the bottom half, it's going to marquee zoom, meaning we could zoom in real close to this size and just see a closer version of the item. We'll do it on multiple tracks like this to zoom in, but the top half still just moves the item. Or we could also have it affect snapping. So the top half is going to move the item, but still snap to our grid, while the bottom half can move the item, but ignore the snapping. So now if we turn on snapping in our grid, moving the top half snaps it to the grid, but moving the bottom half doesn't. So it behaves like holding down the shift key without having to hold it down. It snaps on the top half but doesn't on the bottom half. Moves freely or snaps to the grid based on where we grab our items. And again, just like with the other context, we could reverse it and have this behavior on the bottom half and the other behavior on the top half. It's your choice. And again, there's other modifiers we could change for the top half and the bottom half. So that's left drag. But we could also have double click. And by default, again, it's going to pass through the top half's behavior, but we could change it to anything we want. Like set the time selection to an item, double clicking this item opens the media item properties, but double clicking the bottom half creates a time selection based on the size of the item. You can see it better over here. Creates a time selection based on that size, but double clicking the top half opens the MIDI editor. Or we could have it open the source properties. So double clicking the top half opens the media item properties, but the bottom half opens the source properties. And the same on our MIDI items. Or just like we could do. In left click, we could also do this with double click. We could add any action in our action list to this. Let's search on our filter to split items and let's choose split item on the mouse cursor. Now it shows up here for the bottom half. And now if we double click the top half, it opens the media item properties. But if we double click the bottom half, it splits our items. So we could split these two and delete this, split it over here, here, and delete this, and split our items that easily. Or we can mute our items. Let's choose to toggle mute. It's only going to work on the bottom half. Double click on the top, opens the media item properties. But if we double click the bottom, it mutes that item. Mute this one or this one, and it toggles. So we double click it again, it unmutes the item. So as you can see, everything can be changed in the bottom half for left drag, left click, and double click to anything you prefer, giving us more flexibility between the top half and the bottom half of our items. So that's pretty much it. That's the bottom half of our items in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bingo, boys, let's go.